Uh, one topic I did want to talk to you guys about, we haven't really done it too much. And if anything, I'd love to incorporate sort of algorithmic thinking into this. Uh, we haven't really even reviewed it much lately is the cot report. Uh, I think level two is you'll be doing the cot report probably in about two or three weeks. So it's part of sort of your introduction to the futures industry. Uh, but, you know, pretty powerful information. Really simply put, we want to follow uh, the teal. There's three different participants, if you've never seen this before, uh, that have to report. COT stands for Commitments of Traders. And one of the things back in the 1920s and 30s that the industry tried to do to make it a little bit more level playing field for the public is once a week. And back then it was like once a quarter and once uh, once a month kind of idea. But now... It's on a weekly basis where uh, trading community uh, and really it's industry, you know, like what's Kellogg's Foods actually doing? What is, um, you know, Boone Pickens, if you know who he is, what is he doing? Uh, you know, probably in crypto, we want to know what uh, um, Riot is doing and Mara Blockchain and Coinbase, right? All the big players. What are they doing? We're, if anything, it would probably be uh, quite beneficial if we knew what positions Binance was taking on all of these shit coins. Wouldn't that be helpful? Wouldn't it be nice to know that, oh, it turns out that Binance actually is shorting all of these Bitcoin forward contracts that you're buying on their platform. You think you're buying them from other, uh, other uh, Bitcoin participants, but actually... Binance is taking the opposite side of all of your trades. Why? Because they know that 90 to 95% of people who trade lose money. Uh, lose money. <laughs> Not lose money, but lose money. <laughs> anyway, the point here is that there are reports in the legacy markets, I guess you'd call them, where they are legally required to tell us their positions. On balance... The red guys, eh, we're not really that interested. They're the small specs. They're you and I. And sadly, of course, they always take the wrong side of the trade. <laughs> so we're not really too concerned. If anything, after you do your analysis, like in this particular case, uh, we have the teal, which is basically industry, and they're called the hedgers. And they want to remove price risk. They want to convert price risk into basis risk. I'm not going to go into today. Take the education program if you want to learn about it, uh, why they do that, how they do it. Um, all that matters is the teal guys, they always take the opposite side of the trade. And they're the smart money. Uh, they're the ones that have all the research departments and spend all the money on big analysts that know what the is going to happen. And, of course, they cater to industry. Uh, the green guys, they are the large institutions. They're like Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, all those, you know, uh, brokerage house, Joey Diamond. And they facilitate the trade for the commercials. So if the commercials always want to be on the other side of the market, then by definition, the guys who are going to facilitate the trade, by definition, they are always going to be on the right side of the market. It's a convenient relationship, eh? So I think you'd make the argument here, um, and you have to be careful looking at a uh, report like this, because keep in mind, you see that this emmed out here. So the teal guys actually were hedging, looking for a falling market as of there. So that's kind of interesting that as of this point right here, right there, where it turned back up and it actually confirmed the W's in teal. This is, uh, they're basically calling for a bear market if the market, uh, if the teal moves up like this. And to facilitate the trade, of course, large institutions will short. So in essence, the large institutions were selling, 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 selling all through this move. 
as the bond prices were coming down. Then you notice a bit of an extreme. Teal goes and M's out as of here. So in essence, now in uh, commercials, smart money, always on the wrong side of the market, but they want to be. They're actually expecting now the market to rise. And so you can see through this period here, what did the bond market do? It rose. Keep in mind, this is a monthly price chart. If we go back down to the weekly chart, that's what this is. You can see it's a little bit clearer. So as we said there just a moment ago, was as of this point here that the teal actually W'd out and started to trend higher. Now, what did I say? If teal is trending higher, which way should we expect price to move? Good. Bull gets this. So anyway, point of the matter here is there's the top in the bond market. The teal bottomed out, big old W. Up goes the trend. And these guys are looking for uh, lower bond prices, and sure enough, down go bonds. You can see that little pivot that they tried to put in here. Didn't really translate into too much, but there was a bit of a rally there. Then we start going back down, which means that we're looking for more rally. So it's interesting on price. Um, kind of went sideways through all of this, even though they were kind of thinking uh, that price actually should go up if they're trending down there, right? It's interesting how now do you see how we put in this YW here? And we also have a W within a W. So if this thing uh, Ming out and heading down implies up market, and we didn't even really get that much of an up market, but technically, I suppose from that breakdown point there, you could say that all of this price action was an up market. But now that that's played itself out and this actually is starting to point back up, and I got to say on a weekly basis, this kind of jumped out at me. Which way do you think bond prices should be heading? Out? Uh, if we were heading down and that means that the market should be heading up and it didn't even really do it that much. Now, it sure looks to me like we're trending up now. Which way should prices go? I think down now, eh? So there's an old adage that if a market that's supposed to be going up can't go up, <laughs> it was supposed to be. This is the commercial saying, all right, we think that bond prices are going to go up now. And that's all they do is they just go sideways. What's going to happen now when they actually think that prices are going to go down? I mean, this could absolutely collapse. What did Mr. Powell say about his bond? Uh, well, I guess now they're, they're sales. Can anybody tell me? I mean, he just spoke. He spent two days and he said the same message over and over. Is the Federal Reserve going to be selling bonds? He said that they are going to be selling a lot of bonds. And, but he also said, and I don't think this is true, but he also said, oh, yeah, I've told the market, and they've priced that in. F*** <laughs> you. <laughs> they have not. I would say the commercials are getting the message that you better get ready. The Fed is about to uh, sell a lot of bonds. Thank you.